get out of here. Our rebellion is all that remains to push back the Empire. We think you might be able to help us. When was the last time you were in contact with your father? What is this? It appears he is critical to the development of a super weapon. If my father built this thing, we need to find him. All right. How many do I need? They are requesting a call sign. It's, um, Rogue. Rogue One. The power that we are dealing with here is immeasurable. If the Empire has this kind of power, what chance do we have? We have hope. Rebellions are built on hope. hold of this moment. The force is strong. Make ten men feel like a hundred. We'll take the next chance. And the next. You're all rebels, aren't you? Save the rebellion! Save the dream! Hey Rebel Scum, it's Charlie. So new Rogue One trailer, let's break it down. More Maz Mikkelsen, more Darth Vader. This really spells the story of the movie out, like the narrative in a much better way than previous trailers. I actually like this trailer much better. You know, not just because we get to see Maz Mikkelsen, but because we also get more Darth Vader. And we get to hear Ben Mendelsohn speak, who's playing Krennic, the person wearing that white uniform who's presiding over the construction of the new Death Star. So you see them use the flashbacks to explain how Jin's father was conscripted by the Empire to design and build the Death Star. So he's very sympathetic, but he becomes this Oppenheimer-like figure where he makes this weapon of mass destruction. So you kind of wonder what's going on inside his head. But Maz Mikkelsen is just amazing at playing very complicated characters or characters with complicated morality. Like, he's playing the villain of the Doctor Strange movie that's coming out in November before this movie drops in December. So just a quick reminder, Doctor Strange is early November. This movie, Rogue One, is coming out December 16th for most people. Now, the actual day is just a little different depending on where you live, but just check, like, wherever you usually buy movie tickets and you'll find out when it's coming out. But you can see from all the different locations that they're just trying to make this movie look as different from the main films as possible. It's basically like an anthology film. Like, they want to tell some of the most iconic Star Wars movies, so I don't know what they're going to do with this cast after this movie. We might see them pop up in a sequel to Rogue One, but, like, we know about the Han Solo movie that they're making that won't necessarily be connected to this, but will probably involve some of the same characters. But the set design is amazing, the aliens look crazy, and I just can't wait to see all the different costumes show up at Comic-Con next year, like the Death Troopers, Probably going to be super popular. My favorite Jin costume in this is when she's wearing the control room operator's uniform. She has that special helmet on. That was one of the weirdest things when I was a little kid. Like when you're a little kid, especially when you're watching the old films, you just like absorb all those designs. And you see everybody walking around in Stormtrooper gear. They all look the same. Like everybody wears the same type of helmet. But then you see like really weird one-offs like this. And all you can think of is like, why is this different? I don't understand why they're wearing a different helmet. Where can I find the toy for this? That's like the other impulse when you're a little kid. One, this is cool. I'm not sure why it's different. Two, where can I find the toy for this? So I wouldn't be surprised if they have toys for like every single different type of costume in this movie. We hear a little more of Alan Tudyk's sassy droid. Can't wait to hear more from him. He's kind of like R2-D2 if he were giant and made for murdering people. But you kind of get the idea from some of the voiceover from the rebel characters. This is still very early stage. The way they explain it is there's still a bunch of different rebel cells all over the galaxy that just communicate very briefly, but they don't actually move around like one giant big fleet. So this is like the Dirty Dozen, Ocean's Eleven coming together of a bunch of different people from different rebel cells. So charting the timeline with Star Wars Rebels, this is just like a little bit after Rebels because Rebels is just like the very beginning of the rebellion because they only just start mentioning the word rebellion at the beginning of that series. And I mean, they're a couple seasons deep, but all that stuff is still happening before what you're seeing here. So I know the big question is, is will these characters show up in the main films, the ones that are happening much, much later chronologically 
And is this going to cross over with Rebels? Like, will Rebels characters show up in the movies? Well, I think if Rebels characters are going to show up, they'll show up during these anthology films that take place in the past, just because the Rebels characters would be super old by the time the main films are going on. But I do think that we'll see at least one or two of these characters pop up in the main films eventually, particularly Felicity Jones' character. Like, I'm really expecting her to survive the end of this movie to go on to whatever sequel or other anthology film, but I do think by episode 9, we will actually see somebody pop up. I think they're just only talking about it right now. They haven't completely figured out exactly how they want to use characters from these anthology films, but I do think it'll happen. But the one thing tying these films together right now is really like the original trilogy characters like Mon Mothma, Darth Vader, just, you know, very iconic people. You have things like the Death Star, just like big places, locations, and characters from the original trilogy. So I'd actually recommend that you watch the original trilogy again one more time before you go see this movie, especially A New Hope, because they're stealing the plans for that first Death Star, not the second Death Star. So when she says, many Bothans died to bring us this information, that was the second Death Star in Return of the Jedi. So in keeping with that, there are a lot of people I feel are still confused about what's going on with this film. Like people are like, how come Rey is not in this? This movie is set in the past. It's the story of the rebels stealing the plans for the first Death Star. So if you have any friends or your parents are like totally confused about what's going on with this film, just explain to them how it's a prequel in Star Wars Episode Eight will be coming out next year. But the really cool thing is we are probably going to get a Guardians of the Galaxy trailer either with Doctor Strange or with this movie. So by the time this gets here, we'll obviously get to see a really awesome Star Wars movie, but we'll also get to see Guardians 2 footage. So get hype. And Justice Society is dropping tonight, Legends of Tomorrow, so I'll be posting my video for that after it airs. There was an Aquaman video that I was going to do before this drop, but I'll just do this tomorrow. So a whole bunch more comic book stuff happening, but if there are any other Star Wars videos that you guys want me to do or Episode 8 videos, just let me know in the comments. While you guys wait for that to post, you can click here for that Justice Society trailer video for tonight's episode, and you can click here for my last big episode 8 teaser video. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.